Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. It's time to get into making the RF Tools Control Program to automate the deep resonance stuff. But just before that, I decided on what materials I want to use in the infusing laser for how we're going to affect the properties of our um, RCL. What does that stand for again? Resonating Crystal Liquid, I think? Something like that. Anyway, um, so the best, the absolute best thing to use is probably, well, dimensional shard ore is not that easy to get, but the best thing to use that you can kind of farm without it being a huge pain in the ass would be Ghast Tears or Nether Stars. Those both allow you to get up to 100% in strength and efficiency. Yeah, yep, Ghast Tier does it as well. Um, but I don't have any farm set up for those, and I don't feel like doing that at the moment. So, I'm going to go with materials that I just have on hand at the moment, that we're currently generating. So, I'm going to go with gunpowder and ender pearls. So, the gunpowder gives us pluses to strength and efficiency. Up to a max of 70 for strength and 60 for efficiency. Not amazing, but definitely better than the default 10% that the liquid is. And then we'll finish it off with a bunch of ender pearls to get the purity up to 100% because both of these I generate in my mob farm, so I've got tons of both of them. And then perhaps at some later date we'll switch over to gas tiers or nether stars. One of the unfortunate things about RF tools control is that there doesn't seem to be any way of naming or keeping track of what your variables are, other than just variable 0, 1, 2, 3, which isn't very helpful. So, I've got notes, I'm going to take notes of all my variables, what they mean, and also my nodes. So I place some nodes at places where I'm going to want to be interacting with something. So I've got node 1, node 2, and node 3. I'm sure we'll probably have more before we're done. So node 1 is next to the tank of lava, so we can monitor that. So I'm going to note that. So node 1, lava tank, and an important thing is we need to note the direction of the thing we want to measure from the node, because we're going to need to specify that anytime we go to do anything. So the lava tank from the node is to the east. So lava tank east. And then node 2 is... Um, should I call them purifying tanks? These tanks are not just for purifying. They're just tanks. I'll just say RCL tanks. So RCL tanks, and that's also east. Uh, and then here, node 3 is the infusing laser. We're going to use that to do things like give a redstone signal to the infusing laser. So, node 3, infusing laser, down. Okay, there's our node so far. So, let's start some programming. It's intimidating to begin with. Just a blank screen. Um... Because this is going to be a bit larger than our... Actually, it's going to be quite a bit larger than our past programs. I want to use functions. So just like we have an event... Um, where is it? Signal? Signal. Just like before, I use the event signal to do something when you press a button on a panel. Well, pressing a button on a panel isn't the only way you can trigger an event. Or rather, isn't the only way you can trigger a signal. A signal is basically a function. And a function is basically just a way of taking a bunch of code, or taking a program in this case, since it's not actually code, and bundling it up into a thing that you can reuse. So, for example, we can call this function1. I misspelled that, I don't care. Function1 is going to do thing. That's completely irrelevant what I particularly chose. Function1 does thing. And then down here, I don't know why it's called a test, but we have call function. So in the course of my program, I can say, hey, send out the signal function one. And then it'll go here, do this thing, and then it comes back here and resumes execution right where it left off. Now it says here, call a function, a signal, when that code has done executing, resume execution here. So we can go off, do one of these events, and then come back and continue on. So I'm going to use that to kind of just keep things a bit cleaner and simpler. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make functions or signal events for 
Let's do it for reading some things. So I'm going to make a function for reading the level of the lava in the tank and maybe some other things. Okay, so here's a small example. I just wrote a little function here, read lava. And what it does is it checks the level of the lava in the tank. So we're checking node 1, since that's the lava tank here. Node 1 to the east. And that returns an integer of the number of millibuckets that is in there. And then here I have a test greater than. Um, so I'm asking whether 8,000 millibuckets is greater than the level in the tank. So it's kind of backwards. I wish they had a, a greater than and a lesser than, but you can get the same result just by flipping which place you put the, uh, the value in. It kind of comes across a little bit awkward, but basically if 8,000 millibuckets, um, and remember these tanks hold 16, thousand millibuckets so eight thousand millibuckets is exactly half or fifty percent if fifty percent is greater than the level that is in the tank right now then that means we're below fifty percent lava in the tank in which case I'm gonna say the lava tank is is bad technically it, it might be fine because it can be between 40 and 60 percent but I'm just setting it to kind of like a middle value just to keep it nice and safe so, if, if this is true, then I'm just going to like output some debug stuff to the console. So if this is true, lava level is good. If it's not true, lava level is bad. And then up here I just have a simple repeat. Oh, this needs a number of ticks. I'll say every two seconds. And then it just calls this function. So let's just try this. Call this deep resonance. Let me set up the computer. Um, where's my processor? Oh, it's in here. I put everything in here. Processor. Um, oh, we're going to need to set up the network again, too. Yeah, let me do all that. Okay, just did net setup one, which is the channel name. Found three nodes, so that looks to be working. Let's clear this. Let's throw in the program. And lava level is bad. 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 Okay, so... I guess I reverse this? So I could either reverse the messages, or I could reverse these values. I think I'm just going to reverse these values. I guess I got it mixed up. Yeah, so let's set this the function, and let's set this to 8,000, because I want the green one, the green pathway, the yes, the true, to be everything is okay, and the red one to be bad, otherwise it'll just confuse me. Clear that. Okay, lava level is good. Fantastic. And just to test this. Let's actually go ahead and turn this off so it's not going to transfer any more lava. Let's take some lava out. Oh, where do I put it, though? Well, I just need to take one more bucket. It's fine. Don't need to put it anywhere. Okay, so it should still say good. And then when I take this out, it should be bad. Yeah, lava level is bad. Okay. Good, just a little kind of proof of concept test. Um, let me write some more functions to check some other things, like for this node, to check the tank and... Hmm, do I want a separate function for quality, purity, strength, and efficiency? I might. Let me do that. Okay, I've got a little bit of a program ready. <laughs> Not the whole thing, of course, but I just want to test all my functions that I wrote for looking at the various qualities and purities and stuff like that and see if we can get it to output to a screen and be correct. So here's what I've done. Made a separate function for each one. This is the, the read lava, which we had before. I made a little alteration to this. So I made it so that if we output the lava level is bad message, we don't just output that, but I also added stopping to it to say that it's like a failure condition. And I put a stop program event here. 
So since that's a failure condition, I have it on stop program, and the last thing you're going to see in the console log is lava level is bad, stopping. So it'll tell me exactly what the problem was and why it shut down. Um, so I have all these different functions for testing the reading the purity, reading the strength, reading the efficiency. And all these do is they just output it to a variable. So they don't stop or anything like that because, you know, just because the efficiency or the purity or something is low doesn't necessarily mean we want to stop. We just want to do different things based on whatever those numbers happen to be. They're not really necessarily failure conditions. So all I do is output it to a variable to use later. Um, and I have a list here of exactly what each variable represents. Purity, strength, efficiency, quality. Zero through three. Four different variables. Um, one difference in that, though, is this one for reading... Wait. Efficiency. Whoops. This should have been renamed. This should be read quality. There we go. Save that to the program card. Yes, yeah, so this one's a little bit different. Read quality. It um, it does output it to a variable just so I can display it onto the screen, but it doesn't just put it into a variable and then leave it at that because this is another failure condition. There's no reason the quality should ever go below 100 ever. The only way that's going to happen is if something went wrong with the lava, which theoretically we should catch back here, but, you know, I'm just putting in tons of checks everywhere. So if the quality... Uh, we look at the quality. This test-free quality... Um, if the quality is is equal to 100, I just output quality is good. If it's not, I say quality is bad, stopping, and stop the program. So that's what I've got, and then I just have every single function being called up here. So that's my little test program. And then I also made an RFTools screen with variable modules for all of these four variables. Let's see if it works. And right now, by the way, what's being displayed is just complete garbage. Just whatever was left over before. Okay, let's pray. Oh, oh, I didn't allocate variables. <laughs> I only allocated one variable. Whoops, uh, so we need... There. Yep. Sorry, it's clear that. Level level's good, quality's good, level level's good, quality's good. And... It looks accurate. Just double check. Purity 86, 10, 10. Quality 100. Purity 86, 10, 10. Quality 100. I really wish the text wasn't cut off. I wrote in the full names. Only pu Purity is the only one that survived. Efficien. Oh no, Quality survived as well. Strength. Did I misspell Strength? No, no I didn't. It's fine. Okay, so that works. Um, there we go, we automated deep resonance. So I want to introduce you to a concept that I, I'm going to try to use before I get too deep into the programming. So I was wondering before about whether I would use one laser or multiple lasers, and if I used one laser, how would I switch between different items? Um, because we're going to be switching between gunpowder and ender pearls as far as what we shoot into here. And I'm going to go with one laser just to keep things sort of simple. I mean, it keeps some things simple to use one laser and it makes other things more complicated. The more complicated part is that you have to switch out items. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with one laser. And what I'm going to use as far as how to actually switch out items, I'm going to use an interaction between RF tools control and XNet. So what I'm going to do to have them communicate with each other, I have a node here. And it's got redstone coming out from it, and then I'm going to read the redstone with these XNet connectors. So this one I just named Ender Pearls. This one I named Gunpowder. And if you look over here in the text, I see I wrote node 4, it's for redstone signals, and I specified which direction equals which thing. So what I'm going to do is when it comes time to use Gunpowder or Ender Pearls in the programmer, I'm just going to output the appropriate redstone signal and from the perspective of the program, I'm going to assume that XNet did everything correctly and we're good to go. Which shouldn't be hard at all. Okay, so let me show you what I've done so far. It's, <laughs> it's really not that much. But I'm just trying to think through all this stuff really slowly and methodically. 
So here's the base program. We got all these functions down here, of course, but here's the start of the main program. So this is set to repeat every 20 ticks. It doesn't particularly matter what this is set to. You can set it to one tick and that'd be fine. Um, it's set to only allow one simultaneous run because I don't want it to run multiple instances at the same time. And that leads into this looking at the level of the um, RCL in the tank. But also leading into the looking at the RCL in the tank is not just this event repeat, but it's also this event signal. Signal is called restart, and it also only allows one instance. Now I haven't used this repeat yet, but I think I'm going to use this as basically just like a go-to. So when I get to a point where something doesn't quite look right, you know, something isn't what it needs to be for me to finish the, uh, you know, finish imbuing the liquid and purifying it whatnot, when it hasn't passed muster, so to speak, I'll initiate the repeat and it'll just go back to the beginning and go through all the checks again. So I think that's what I'm going to use that for. I'm pretty sure I'll want that at some point. Okay. So these first checks are basically making sure that everything in the tank is ready and okay to do stuff with. So the first check is the RCL level. So we read the RCL level and I'm comparing it against, uh, I want to see if it's larger than 5,999 millibuckets. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that there's at least 6,000 millibuckets in the tank because apparently 6,000 millibuckets is exactly how much RCL you need to make one crystal. So the idea being, if there isn't enough fluid in the tank to make one crystal, then don't even bother processing it. Uh, the next check, we're evaluating the variable zero, which if you look over here, the variable zero is purity. So we're evaluating purity, and we're testing against that. And we want to make sure that purity is above 84. And if so, well, I haven't put in the next thing that's going to happen here, but that's what I've got so far. And these tests, like this one, so what, what this should do is, if the uh, number, if the amount of RCL in the tank is not enough, then, well, it'll do nothing, because this green one is what it will do if it is, if there is enough fluid in the tank. If there isn't enough fluid in the tank, then it would do whatever is down here, this red thing, but since there's nothing there, then it should do nothing, and I believe it will restart. So, we're, at this point, at this exact point here in the program, we know that there's enough RCL in the tank to make a crystal with, and we know that the purity is at an acceptable level for us to begin shooting the laser at it. So now we're getting into laser stuff. Now, next stage is at this point, we don't know what the strength or the efficiency is. I haven't tested for that. Because uh, at this stage in the program, for all we know, I've already shot it with enough of the laser at this point that it's done, right? So I need to test for that. I need to test whether it's done with a laser or not. If it's not done with a laser, then we can shoot more of the gunpowder into it. If it is done with a laser, then we don't really want to do anything. So, what I really want to check is if we look here at the uses for the laser, gunpowder. So gunpowder, strength plus 8%, efficiency plus 4%. Since we're using the gunpowder to raise both strength and efficiency, logically what I really want to test is if strength is below 70, since that's the max, or if efficiency is below 60, we want to shoot it with the gunpowder. But doing an or statement like that, one or the other, I could clobber it together somehow. It probably wouldn't be that hard, but it'd be kind of cumbersome. There's no just actual or logical statement in RF tools control, unfortunately. So just to simplify it, I'm just going to do a test for efficiency. The idea being, because efficiency raises at half the rate that strength does, it raises by 4%, whereas strength raises by 8%. If I test whether efficiency is at 60, that should tell me whether strength is at 60 as well. Let me kind of restate that because it's probably kind of confusing. 
if efficiency is at 60%, we can safely assume that strength is also at 70%. Because this race is so much faster, to get to this point guarantees that we've also gotten to this point, the 70%. So that's what I'm going to do to simplify that or statement. And that is going to go right here. Oh, I forgot a step in between here too. Um, so this eval integer, where we look at the purity, variable zero. I forgot that before doing that, we need to actually set variable zero. So I'm calling the function read purity, which will set the variable. Then we actually evaluate it. Man, every time I get deep into a visual programming language, not that I've done it very often, <laughs> but when I do, it always makes me think, I wish I was just actually programming. Because it gets way more confusing than it needs to be. I think for very simple stuff, visual programming languages seem to be a lot faster and a lot better. But for more complex stuff like what I'm trying to do here, I think it's the other way around. Anyway, I'm definitely going to see this through to the end though. So just to bring you up to speed. Um, right, so this is the... This is us reading the purity, this is us evaluating the... Um, evaluating the purity. And then we're testing the purity, making sure that it's above 84%. In other words, it's ready for the laser. So now the new stuff I've added is this test. This is testing whether variable 2, which is the efficiency, is equal to 60. Because I hope I didn't misremember this. The efficiency... Yeah, so the efficiency is the one we want to see if it's 60. So if the efficiency is 60, that means we don't need to use the gunpowder on it anymore. And we move on to this. This is testing variable 0, which is the purity. If that is equal to 100, that means we've already hit it with the ender pearls, and we're done. So whatever other stuff would need to happen, I guess maybe... Maybe I'll set up like an Xnet signal here, but whenever we're done with it and basically we just need to put in the crystallizer, that's going to go here. But... What if it's not 60? If it's not 60, then we want to hit it with the laser. So we, so down here, this, this not 60, we want to output the signal to node 4 that says switch to gunpowder. And we want to output a redstone signal to the infusing laser on node 3, telling it to turn on. Okay, I think I've got the basic setup, I'm pretty sure. So what I added here, this is the everything is successful, we're ready to send it to the crystallizer part. And just as a placeholder, I just put a message here, sending to crystallizer. I'm not actually sending anything to it yet. I'm going to save that for later. But I added these branches. So for this branch, we're testing whether we need to um, infuse it with gunpowder. If this is equal that means we have already infused it with gunpowder and we're good and we continue on. If it's not equal, we need to infuse it with gunpowder, which is what this does. So this on node 4, it outputs a redstone signal to the south, which I'm going to use an Xnet to interpret as switch to gunpowder. Then we turn on redstone on node 3 down, which is the infusing laser. So we're setting it to 15, we're turning on the infusing laser. Then we're waiting 20 ticks, one second. Then we're turning the infuser laser off. So again, this tells Xnet switch to gunpowder. This turns the infusing laser on. We wait a second and then we turn it off. And at this point, it should restart this whole check and then, you know, check and see whether we need to keep infusing it with gunpowder or whatnot. So once it passes this check and we've finished with gunpowder, it gets to this one. So if it is 100, then we're done. Send it to the crystallizer. If it's not 100, we need to hit it with ender pearls to get the purity to 100%. So this is just... These parts here are just complete mirrors of each other. They just turn the, the laser on. The only difference is this. Before we turn the laser on in this one, we go node 4 west, which an Xnet will interpret as switch to ender pearls. So that's the only difference. This one switches to gunpowder, this one tells Xnet to switch to Ender Pearls. So I think this should be all we need to get the fluid to the quality that we need it to be. So I want to test it before I move on. Um, I've saved it to the thing. Let's go 
set up the inventory and the XNet stuff. So XNet can read these redstone signals. That's great, but we need the actual inventory to move stuff in and out of the infusing laser. Okay, so I've got these drawers set up. Um, I think I'll put filter material in one of these and then maybe cobblestone for the magma crucible in another one. But that's for the future. For now, we just need to worry about the gunpowder and the ender pearls. It's connected up. I also connected these up just to supply them with power because something was very power hungry. I put down like three of these wireless RF transmitters and the screen controller was still running out of power. And it wasn't, it wasn't the uh, wireless transmitters messing up as far as I could tell. They were supplying power, it just wasn't enough. So anyway, that's solved with these hardwired connections. So let's tell XNet how to interpret the uh, these redstone signals. So we need a logic channel. I'll just leave it active. That's fine. Ah, right. I named them. Okay. So logic channel. Ender pearls. I'm gonna say. So we're going to set it to sensor mode. We're going to check for redstone to equal 15. In other words, on. Or, I don't know, I could do greater than... Nah, let's just... It's going to be 15. I set it to output at 15, it'll be 15. And for that, we'll output white. For this one, we'll do the same sort of thing. 15, but for that one, we'll output red. I could set these to something color appropriate for gunpowder and ender pearl, but eh, whatever. Okay, uh, now we need transfer thingies. I can put this all on one channel. Whoops, wrong type of channel. Yeah, so let's set up an item channel. I'll turn it off for now. I'm gonna say this is the ender pearl one. Or no, so, um, yeah, so if there's ender, if we want ender pearls, if we're receiving an ender pearl signal, if we're receiving a white, that means we want ender pearls in the infusing laser. Oh, I can't actually do this in one channel, can I? No, I need two channels for this. All right, two channels. So for the infusing laser, um, am I get wait? Am I gonna need four channels for this? Crap. Uh, we'll see. So if we receive a white, that means we want to take out whatever's in the infusing laser. So I'm going to extract, and I'm going to insert again on white into the gunpowder so we're going to take the gunpowder out of the infusing laser and put it back in here and at the same time yeah so this is why i need another channel at the same time we want to extract ender pearls again on white and insert them into here also on white so we X... Oh, that's not going to work quite right. I need to filter this. Yeah, this needs to be filtered. So we're going to be extracting only gunpowder. Otherwise, it'll extract both gunpowder and enderpearls. Well, this is getting confusing real fast. <laughs> I thought this would be a little bit simpler. So we're extracting gunpowder only. And inserting into the appropriate drawer. We're extracting enderpearls and inserting that into there. Okay, so that's correct for the first one. Now, do I need separate channels to make it go the other way? Um. Hmm. Because I need to extract from this, but I need to do it on a different color. I do need two more channels. Damn. That's going to be all my channels already. I'm going to have to make another extent network or something. I feel like there must be an easier way to do this. Uh, I'm not sure. So let's turn these off. 
Okay, so this is going to be the same thing, but the reverse. So, if we're getting a red signal, that means we want to switch to gunpowder. Which means I'm going to need a sample of that. That means we're going to extract ender pearls on red. And we're going to insert them into here on red. Then at the same time on red, we're going to extract gunpowder. This is damn confusing, isn't it? We're going to extract gunpowder on red, and we're going to insert it on red into here. Red, 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 white, 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 white. These are filtered, yes. Okay, I think that's right. Yeah, this is way more complicated than I thought. Ah, I feel like there must be a way to make that easier. Anyway, I'm going to turn all these on, and it should do nothing at the moment. Okay, good. Yeah, because no redstone signal's happening here, so it should do nothing. Okay. If I've done everything correctly, <laughs> we'll see about that. I should be able to just insert my program in there, and then I should be able to just watch this, and the strength should go up to 70, the efficiency to 60%, the purity to 100%, and then it should stop. What do you think the chances are that it's going to work right the first time? I think probably very, very unlikely. Um, I do want to make one small modification to the program, though. I realized... Um, so I'm reading off these things on the screen. I would like to keep those up to date. And right now my program doesn't do that. It only activates these different things when they're called. And at the moment, I only call, like, one of them. <laughs> oh... Yes, actually, ooh, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Um, this is testing for efficiency. That's purity, so I do call the read purity, but this is testing for efficiency, and I didn't call read efficiency. Okay, I added in that call to read efficiency, and I also added in just some event repeats, so some timers, every three seconds, I want to call these read quality, read efficiency, read purity, and read strength, just to keep these variables up to date, so that they display correctly on the screen. Yeah, so the only ones I'm actually calling in my program that I need to know in my program are efficiency and purity, but the rest I'd like to keep up to date anyway. Wait a minute. Do I? No. Don't think about it too hard. Don't think about it too hard. Just shove the program in. Everything's going to work fine. <laughs> Are you ready? Here goes the maiden voyage. I'm... I don't think stuff can go too wrong here. But I'm definitely going to pull the plug if something goes very, very wrong. Okay. Ah. Nothing's happening. Um. Oh. Wait, what? Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. I don't think I set up the network when I added this node, did I? Hold on a sec. Thank you. Okay, what is it? Net. Net setup. Actually, still net list. Yeah, just three of them, so I didn't set it up after putting the new one. Net setup one. Found four nodes. Okay. Good. Alright, now let's try it. Why am I not seeing any redstone? Um. Hmm. Wait, what? Seven one missing node. Um. Oh, 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 oh. Hello. 
This is misnamed, isn't it? Not four. Node four. Okay. Everything's gonna go perfect. One of these should turn on. No, I saw an error message. What? How is <sighs> I must have misnamed one of them here. Um, seven, one. One, two, three, four. Wait. Yeah. Five, six, seven. One? No. This one? Note four. Mm-hmm. Note four. No space. Not capital. Oh, I probably need to reset it up when I change the name, don't I? Maybe? Maybe. So there's also net list. Oh, I did that before. What is net info? Channels one, notes four. That's not very helpful. Okay, well, let's see if that works. Ooh, it's doing things. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. It's set to... Um, gunpowder, which is good. It is shooting. It does not have gunpowder in it. Not good. Abort! <laughs> what? What's wrong? Oh, no! It left it on. Um... Shit. It's not a big deal. And off. There we go. Whew. Okay. I mean, all we really did is just keep putting up the purity. So it's not exactly the most horrible thing to happen. So now it's transferring that. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This might have just been an issue of not setting it to stack. Yeah, it's set to single, so it just didn't extract it fast enough. So let's extract stacks. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so now it's full. Is it, um... Yeah, I guess the side effect of me just yanking out the processor is whatever I set the redstone to, it stays. Unless you set it to something else. So that's... Hmm. That means you really don't want to pull out the processor. If you can help it, but sometimes you just can't help it. Elsewise, I would need to make sure I, like, set these redstones at the beginning of the program, always. On initialization. Anyway. Alright. Should be fine now. So it's hurting the purity, but raising the strength and efficiency. Given how little effect it's having with each second pulse, I think I should pulse it for longer. But anyway, the purity's going down, so once it goes below 85%, it should start... Uh, should stop with the gunpowder and start with the ender pearls, right? Um, what's happening? No message... Huh. I don't know what happened. Strange. So the 83.8%, that means it hit... Um... This. So now that it's below it... Oh, wait, I messed this up, didn't I? I... Did I mess it up? Yes. No, oh. Yeah, I did mess it up, okay. So the issue is that we've gone below the threshold. Wait, no, no, no. No, 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 it's fine. Yeah, yeah, sorry, it's perfectly fine. Yep, 
yeah, this is what it's supposed to do. Um, something's wrong, though. Why are these not filtering it? So this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to stop, and it's supposed to not waste any ender pearls or use any gunpowder. It's supposed to simply wait until these purifiers purify it back up to 85%. But the question is, why are they not purifying it? It's at 83.8% and it's just staying there. Why? They have filter material. What's the problem? I don't understand. Why are they not filtering? Hmm. This is for the spent filter stuff. It's not changing at all, not even slowly. Well, I guess I can just destroy them and replace them. Shouldn't affect anything. Maybe they just bugged out? Okay, now they're purifying. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is what it's supposed to do. Once it gets back up to 85%, it should use the gunpowder on it. There we go. Starting to shoot it with the gunpowder. Purity's going down. Yeah, so that's working correctly. Shoots it with the gunpowder until the purity goes below about 84%. And then it stops, wait till it goes back up, goes back up, start shooting with the gunpowder again. Thereby raising the strength and efficiency. Yeah, okay, that's working. It's working perfectly. Of course, I need to uh, automate putting filter material in there, into all these things, but, uh... Yeah, that's working great. It just takes a really, really, really long time. Yeah, takes a very long time. Um... Would it make it much faster if I just made it use the gunpowder for longer? I don't think it would make that big of a difference, to be honest. Let's see how much it affects it. 0.3... Eh, there's a bit of lag in between when it's... Like, when it switches, so I think it may actually be a good thing to lengthen it. Okay. So that's an easy fix. It's here. So when we're doing the ender pearls, this is the ender pearl, this is the gunpowder. Let's just set it to, I don't know, six seconds? Is that too long? The bad thing about it, about this, is when we hit this weight, it's not going to be able to do anything else. So the variables and stuff aren't going to refresh. So I don't want this to be too long. But I mean, six seconds is not a big deal, is it? We'll see. I can't believe this is actually working. I mean, not quite first try. Like, we ran into some little issues with the node, but as far as, like, the basic logic, it seems to be working great. I just want to see what happens with the ender pearls. Okay, so now it's going to stay on for longer. Yep, yeah, working good. Yeah, excellent. I think another way I can make it faster, too, is it seems to slow down on the purifying when it gets closer to 85%. Like, it purifies kind of fast to begin with, and then it starts to really slow down around there. So... Just want to make sure I didn't take that out while the lasers were shooting. I believe I can change that as well. So this test, 84... Um, let's just make this more accepting. So instead of making sure it's 84 or above, let's set it to like 70 or above. Right? Oh, wait. If I change this, then it's going to start doing the ender pearls earlier. Okay, maybe let's set it to like 80. It will waste a very small amount of ender pearl because it's not going to purify it up to 84% before it starts shooting the ender pearls in it, but I don't think that's a big deal. It'll probably make it substantially faster. Oh my god, is my thing actually working? Okay. So yeah, it should shoot for six seconds, and then it's going to stop, recheck stuff, and then it should start shooting again quite quickly. Yep, and it does. 
then it should stay off for a longer period of time once it goes below 80. Yeah, this is much faster. Way, way faster. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to watch this and wait until the efficiency gets to 60%, and I'll bring you back when it hits that point, and we'll see if the ender pearls work. Okay, we're almost there. 56% efficiency, almost 57. Okay, is it going to work when it hits 60? When it hits 60, which it's about to do, we should see this flip. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Flipped. Hmm, why does this still have gunpowder? Wait, 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 why are both on? How did... How, what? How did that happen? Alright, we gotta yank that. Wait for the laser to turn off, there we go. How are both on? Oh, wait a minute, I see. Hmm. So, this test became true. The only time we turn the redstone... Wait. No, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, so here's what was happening. We were here, right? It was turning the redstone level on for the whole gunpowder thing. Um, then we waited for six seconds. So we're shooting the gunpowder for six seconds. And during that six seconds, at some point, the efficiency hit 60. Then we should have turned it off. Right, this turned it on. Wait. Wait a minute. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, I just made a small mistake. Easy fix. Yeah, so, okay, I'm turning off the redstone signal for the laser, but I forgot to turn off the redstone signal for node 4. So here's where we turn it on. Oh, so yeah, I just need to turn off the redstone signal for this one. So just make that 90. <laughs> 90 redstone. And then here, set this to zero, right? Yeah, that should do it. Yeah, okay. Easy fix. Now we should see only one. I think that doesn't work. Um, it doesn't work because I pulled it out mid-process. So it's a little bit hard to explain, but the efficiency is never going below 60, so it's never triggering the off for it which wouldn't normally be an issue if I hadn't pulled the processor and put in this fix partway through, but I guess if I want to guarantee that that's okay, I can put the off for this over here and put the off for this over here, guaranteeing that they mutually disable the other one. Just guarantees that it won't be a problem. Okay, that should fix it. What? <laughs> um. Okay, maybe we'll be okay now. That's the Ender Pearl one. Good. Okay. But it's full of gunpowder. Why? Why are you full of gunpowder? Ender Pearl is active. 
When ender pearl equals 15, this does equal 15, yes. Ender pearl. When ender pearl equals 15. Redstone. Output white. On white, we extract from ender pearls. We insert into the infusing laser, yes, and we also extract gunpowder specifically and insert into the gunpowder one. Why do you have gunpowder? If I take you out, do you get ender pearls? You do. I don't understand. Why wasn't it extracting? Can you not extract from this? It's inserting just fine. Hmm. That's curious. Anyway. Seems to be working now. I mean, working for the moment. Obviously, it's not going to work in the long term. I'm not sure what's up with that. Can you not extract? Huh. All right, well, I'm going to wait till this purity hits 100 and see if the laser stops and we get the message sending to crystallizer. Okay, just hit 100. So after the laser goes for six seconds, it should stop and it shouldn't go again. Good. And sending to crystallizer. Sweet. Okay, I, that I mean, didn't exactly work first try, but I'm incredibly impressed. It basically works. That is so cool. Obviously a bit more work to do. So one thing I want to test is, can we extract from the infusing laser? And if so, is it limited to a particular side? Like maybe I can't extract from the bottom? So let's test it. I just cheated in this infusing laser. I'm going to delete it after this test. Let's use item conduits. So it's got some gunpowder in it. Let's try extracting from the side. Oh, okay. Always active extract. Yeah, so we definitely can extract from the side. Hopefully the top. Where's my axe? Probably shoved it in here. No? No, yes I did. I pray this works, because if it doesn't, then the bottom certainly isn't going to work. Eh. There we go. Hover. Extract, always active. Insert. Ooh. I see. You can't extract at all? Unless, maybe from the back. No. Okay, so they really just made it so that you can't extract from it at all. I guess that's to encourage even more automation. I think that's actually not a big deal. Yeah, that should be pretty easy to not exactly solve, but just make it pretty much a non-issue. So here's what I'm going to do. Well, first let's delete that infusing laser. So you saw that when it was misbehaving, after I took out the gunpowder, after I extracted it, then it inserted the correct thing. So I think what I can do is just tell it not to keep 64 in stock. Just have it keep less in stock. So then when it turns off, it, it will have to burn through maybe a couple gunpowder or a couple ender pearls when it's trying to affect, you know, the, the opposite thing when it doesn't want to do that, but that's perfectly fine. That's not a big deal at all. Yeah, so here on the insert side, now, uh, So on white, we're inserting ender pearls. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter what we're inserting, actually. How many do I want to keep in there? I guess just like two? Yeah, and that should solve it. Yeah, that should be it. And then it turns out we actually don't need these channels. 
that take it out of it, out of the infusing laser, and put it back in. So I can just delete that one and delete that one. Yeah, sweet. I am so happy with this. This is so cool. It's a pain in the ass to set up. I mean, like, look at this. <laughs> oh, I forgot that was even on the screen. I hope that wasn't covering up something important. Let me get rid of that. Boop. It's a pain in the ass to the point where I have to write down nodes and variables and exactly what they represented, but I'm really satisfied. Well, I think I'll end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to hopefully finish up on this and implement the part where we send it to the crystallizer, which should be relatively simple. Get some of the power generation going, get the uh, spent filters and the cobblestone in here, kind of automate more of it, and we should be able to start generating power next episode. <laughs>